You're listening to the Masonic Light Podcast. Starring Pete Ruggieri, Larry Maris, and Jason Lewis. This podcast is not endorsed by any Grand Lodge, and the ridiculous ramblings of the hosts are their own. So sit back and enjoy some Masonic conversation without pretension. And now, here's your hosts, Pete, Larry, and Jason. And we're back with Masonic Late Podcast, week number 19? I think so. 19. This is uh, Pete with uh, Larry. And Jason. And Jason. And our special guest, RC. Say hi, RC. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So RC is going to be um, a regular here. RC is going to be our brother on the street doing some interviews. But today he's going to be our guest. So um, today's episode is brought to you by Pure Water Technology. That's purewatertechnology.com. Purewatertechnologypa.com? There's a PA in it. Oh, for God's sake. I swear, there is a PA well, in it. Pure Water t- PA. The good news is we're going to mention your company a thousand times. Because <laughs> purewatertechnology.com is a different company. <laughs> okay. So, Jason, you look that up, but I'll mention our second sponsor, and then you can come back in and correct me. Uh, also, R. Scott Hoover, your personal painter... Now, R. Scott does not have a website. He does not have a business phone number. He's really, but he is a good painter. He's just, so, uh, but you contact him through Facebook. He has a phone number. He just doesn't want to blast it over the internets. Okay. He is a word of mouth Mason referral painter. Right. So if you're in uh, central Pennsylvania, northern Delaware, northern Maryland. Surprisingly, you can still do business well doing doing what he's doing. Well, he's a one-man operation, so he can only be so busy, so... And purewaterpa.com. Purewaterpa.com. The best water and best coffee on the planet uh, that we've had today. Um, also, MasonicScarves.com. Uh, it's my, my wonderful company, so make sure you go in there and you buy a scarf, and then uh, you'll keep my uh, beer budget going. I hear the owner's a jerk. And speaking of jerks, <laughs> Red Serpent by Larry Maris. Yeah, I'm here, Pete. Yeah, so you can uh, go and uh, look up Red Serpent um, at LarryMaris.com. And Available you, at Amazon, Kindle, or uh, Barnes & Noble, or any fine bookstore, yeah, any fine bookstore in the world, actually. And it is available in about 25 different countries. All right, so that's enough mercenary or other motives. Uh, so we'll get back to, to, to free masonry, not paid masonry. So, um, Jason, what yes. have you had? Have you had anything going on the past week or two? Well, do you want to introduce him? No, Quick. no. All right. Uh, last week or two, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to RC. Oh God, what uh, what have I done? Um, due season. Uh, oh, Tall Cedars. Well, I'm sure we'll probably talk about that later. But uh, went to the Tall Cedars meeting that you were in the cast, and yeah, that's really it. Lodge of perfection. Larry, anything for you? Well, other than goose and gridiron, which incidentally, let me tell this little story. We were not supposed to have goose and gridiron because it always falls on a Thursday. And Thursday was a holiday, so I figured I don't have to send notices out. I don't have to deal with this. And quite honestly, I'm tired of having breakfast with these guys. Yeah, right. So what happens is Jason oh, yeah. d- d- decides he's going to go ahead and hold breakfast uh, uh, on, on Wednesday. And lo- believe it or not, well, we have 10 or 12 guys show up. Yeah, we did. And I begrudgingly went and met him on Wednesday. But, geez, I'm getting tired of it. We had a good time. Yeah, we did. We had a good time. I was talking about the venue when we were discussing it at Tall Cedars, and I posted that we were going to have breakfast on the venue's page and not our private group page on Facebook. And I'm glad I did, and unfortunately, our normal venue, the uh, owner's mother, had uh, some health issues. So luckily, unluckily, she was able to catch us and say, uh, you won't be able to come here tomorrow, but we did uh, send out a nice little card and get well soon. And... uh Lastly, and not least, our new special guest and new correspondent, Brother R.C. McCorvey. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, now, R.C., uh, we're going to get into your full interview here in a minute, but uh, we'll just uh, give the short version right now. You're a uh, brother in Lamberton Lodge with uh, Larry and I. Yes. And you've been a Mason about how long? Hmm. About eight months now. 
All right, and they've already suckered you into the chairs. Yeah, I didn't. That was before I listened to the show, and I, I have made eye contact. <laughs> See, yeah, you would I've have made, learned. I've made eye contact numerous times. Yeah, if you show up to more than one meeting, they know you're hooked. You also kept raising your hand. Yeah. <laughs> so have you done anything Masonically in the past couple weeks? No, not really, other than the, the last trip we all took up to, uh, where did we go, to Philadelphia? Yep, Grand Lodge of Philadelphia, Philadelphia. the uh, Egyptian room. The Egyptian room was really nice, and I was a taxi cab driver. <laughs> yeah, I got to drive the bus. <laughs> so, yeah, RC is a, a driver in real life, and uh, so, yeah, we made him uh, donate his time and drive, drive us to Philly. Um, so we're going to come right back uh, with a real, a real, like, real legit interview with Brother RC, and we're going to talk about some of the cool things we're going to be doing with him. Hey there, listeners. This is Pete, and I wanted to tell you about MasonicScarves.com. Masonic Scarves offers full-color, knitted, soccer-style scarves, perfect for you to wear to lodge, out casually, or even to display in your home. I currently have in our lineup pretty much every Masonic body from Blue Lodge, York Rite, Scottish Rite, Grotto, Shrine. If you think about it, I probably have it. Are you a turtle? Well, you bet your sweet ass I have a scarf for that. So you can easily order online with a credit card, and I'll generally have your scarf in the mail the next business day. Do you need an easy fundraiser for your lodge or organization? I can have a custom scarf design delivered to you in about four weeks, as long as you order a minimum of 50 pieces. I can help you with the artwork, and you'll have an original item that you can sell or hand out as a gift for visitors or past masters. Visit MasonicScarves.com or drop me an email at info at Masonic Scarves and I'll be glad to help you. Welcome back. And uh, it's my privilege to uh, interview R.C. McCarvey, who is our special guest today. And of course, like Pete said, and I'll repeat, brother on the street. And this will be, it's been confirmed, episode 19. So if you're listening... 19. Uh, RC, I've known you now since... We, we get very confused here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you're listening, you already know it's episode 19. Because it says that on the screen. <laughs> yeah, right. it does. Uh, I've known RC for quite a while. As a matter of fact, when he was going through his first degree, he started showing up at fellowship committee meetings. So RC has been volunteering for things before he was ever made a Master Mason, which you could do. Fellowship committee was, you know, any brother that's a brother, first, second, or third degree. So he kept showing up and coming to these things. Uh, and I, as I said, I've known him for quite a while. Actually, I talked to him the night. At, at least 11 months. Last last year's <laughs> Long time. annual dinner, Brother Larry Hudson brought, brought R.C. to the dinner. And I went over and talked to him at that time. I said, you need to join. And he said, I'm going to. And by golly, he followed up and he's now a brother. Anyway, my first question. This is going to be a good one. Oh, for God's sake. Here we go. You're from California. Yeah. And we talked about, you know, what brought you east and so forth. So I won't necessarily get into that. But one of the things you told me that stuck in my mind. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think your dad's going to listen to this broadcast? No. Unless okay. I, unless I uh, inform him to. Yeah, you're not, are you going to inform him or not? No, not, not just yet. And, I will, and, but not just yet. And tell me why that is. Well... Like you said earlier, I come from California, and uh, I, I'm what you call a PK, which is a preacher's kid. And uh, I was raised as a preacher's kid. My dad is a fire and brimstone preacher, and my mom's a missionary. And, uh, you know, when you talk about masonry in California, um, no one really knows too much other than blood sacrifices and goats and everything <laughs> of the devil, and you're going to hell. So... Um, I always was wanted to know about it, you know. I guess I was the what they call the black sheep. <laughs> so once you get here, it's not what you know what everybody portrays it to be. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just sometimes I don't understand why. Are you are you disappointed that it's so boring? No, I actually <laughs> <laughs> I actually like it. But the you know perspective of what everybody think it is, you know, uh, secret society cult. 
you know, of the devil, 666, you know, blood sacrifice. It, it, ever since I put this ring on and I wear my ring, it, you better come correct, as they say, because you're going to get a lot of questions. Yeah. And people are going to try to grill you and get secrets out of you. Mm -hmm. And they just want to know, did you guys kill anybody? Or <laughs> We killed a bunch of pancakes. <laughs> That's why I tell them all we do is eat. <laughs> yeah, the most disappointing thing is when when I finally got through all my York rate degrees, I finally got my orders um, of commandery, and I looked at my my buddy and I'm like, really? That's it? That that's it? <laughs> like I've been waiting for the weird shit to happen, and it, it just it doesn't happen. So, but now I'm stuck. Now I'm in, even though there is nothing weird. Oh, now did you train to be a preacher like your dad? No, I was always in, in the back, the back right. scene. I was the PK guy. I made everything go, you know. I just. But will you be able to give us a sample later of your best <laughs> yeah. Sunday? Yeah, yeah, right. Sunday. And, I mean, like, there was a Pentecostal church near my house in Lancaster City. And, like, you know, you don't want to have to call the cops because the church is singing too loud. <laughs> but, like, I mean, it was a noise ordinance every single every single night these guys got together. So is that how your church was? Oh, yeah. It's the choir, oh, man. Like, what, over on New Street or something like that? Um, North Marshall. Yeah, big red building. It was a no. church, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a church. With all the singing coming out of it? Yeah. All the singing coming out of it. But, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, they really never talked about masonry. And um, once I got in, settled down, I'm, well, I'm still settling down as we speak, um, it's a joyous occasion for me to... Uh, to get in brothers, you know, meet brothers and and like when I hang out with you guys and hang out with the people at Lodge, it's just like history, you know. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of uh, brothers in there, they, they they go way back and they can just tell you a lot of things. It's just like sitting in a history class and you just they blow your mind and you can just sit there and talk to them for hours. But the only problem is I got to go to work at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I. Uh, I go to work the next day, red eyes, and with all this bunch of stories I've had, it, it, it keeps me up during the day. And uh, I really like, you know, being a Mason. I just wish that we as Masons should go out more. And uh, I wouldn't say recruit, but unveil somewhat of the, not all the secrets, just, you know, just, I don't know why everybody just think we're... Make it more accessible. Yeah. And a little I don't bit more transparent. Yeah, because everybody always think we're just, like I said, blood sacrifice, goats. I think, I think it's people like you, though, that people will look up to and talk to and, and gain a respect for you as a brother Mason and also become interested in maybe joining because of you. Uh, I think you tell a good story. Whatever. He's only been around, what, eight months, nine months? Yeah. And he's already, he's got the doctrine down perfectly. And, of course, I think, we mentioned earlier he is going to start going through the chairs so he's converted we got him trust me do not look at the secretary <laughs> no ne never become the secretary <laughs> no about eight about eight months that's when i said i'll be assistant secretary are you ever mm -hmm. gonna tell your dad you became a brother oh yeah i'll, I'll let him know at, at the appropriate time i just christmas would be a good time wouldn't it i was thinking more like on my birthday in, in january <laughs> Then I won't get Christmas gifts. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess your pop's not on Facebook. Yeah, he's on Facebook. He's on Facebook. Leave so he's me. not like linking like under like some of these pictures and. Uh, well, he's like, why are you in a tuxedo next to all these white boys? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? I, I he's on Facebook, but he's not uh, one of those Facebook trollers that just you know he's on there. He might post the good word. I or, think what uh, you need to do is get a petition, fill it out for him. Be his first line signer, and then just call him and say, "Hey, I'm sending you something. I need you to sign and send it to him." No, no, actually, R <laughs> RC told me that he was. Yeah, he already he had was asked to yeah. join, so he's he's not. I don't think totally biased against the uh, against the brotherhood. Right. I, I think he's what's he's okay with what it. What scared but. him away was wor the word "worshipful master." Right. So he's like, "Well, well, I only praise the Lord," you know. <laughs> so I was like, "Why didn't you go?" He's like, "Ah." They got rituals and this and that, and this and that, and you know that that's not of God. You'll, you'll go to hell. So, and there and again is what the the blood sacrificing. I don't know who, why is masonry linked with sacrificing blood and goats? Chicken pot pie. Yeah. All the chickens that laid down their life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you could go online and and try and find out where all that started. I mean, I, it it doesn't help that we're a private or I, I hate to say the word secret. We're private. And, um, you know, we, we, 
when we do good things, we don't even tell people about it. So anytime there's a door closed, people assume the worst. Um, and, you know, and hey, we're everybody's fighting for your time. Yeah. So like, like, you know, churches, fire halls, uh, you know, so if you're active in your Mason Lodge, you're probably not active in all these other things. And, you know, churches want your time. They want your money. Yep. You know, and so. Yeah, I think it's hard. You know, we do open installation in our district, and, and, and some districts do, some districts don't. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's difficult because, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of open installation, but it's the one thing I get to, inter- you know, invite my family to. Uh, but you're telling the truth when you say, this is the closest you're going to see to ritual. It's probably 50% of the ritual is there. And, but nobody believes you because they've never seen it behind closed doors. So, I don't know, it's a curse and a blessing. So what, think, what, 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 um, oh. so RC, what, um, Larry's making hand signals over here. He doesn't have to pee. So <laughs> what, uh, what drew you? Like what was, was cause you know, brother Larry Maris or not Larry Maris, brother Larry Hudson is your neighbor. Is that what kind of what got you to join or what, what kind of sparked your interest to ask to join? No, like I said earlier, as a kid growing up and as an adult in California, I, there is a. I would see the older guys with the Mason symbols on the back of their uh, vans, and they would wear the Mason hats. But here's the $100 question. Were they Prince Hall or were they regular Masons? I don't know. I just was always mesmerized by the symbol. So by Larry uh, Hudson being my neighbor, we, we would walk a lot, a lot. And uh, I think he bought his first ring. And when I saw the ring... I, I, you know, it, it was just like I asked him about it, and he's like, "You want to become one? Oh, well, why not?" And then it went from there. But uh, as I was going through the petition and everything, I tried to drill and drill and drill him and get secrets out of him too. And he just wouldn't tell me anything. He just wouldn't tell me anything. So, um, but like you said earlier, once you go through it, you're like, "Oh, this is it." I mean, most people are like, "Well, what do you guys do on stated meetings?" I'm like, "Nothing." We don't do nothing. We pay the bills. <laughs> yep, pay the bills. A little we Masonic eat, history. We eat, yay or nay, and that's about it. Usually mm. the first uh, first stated meeting that a, a, a new Master Mason comes through has got to be a shock to their system. They've yeah. gone through three degrees. Yeah. They've gone through a lot of ritual, which is really great. And then they come to a stated meeting. They come to a stated meeting expecting. Expecting a lot, and we give them what we have. Oh, well, my God. I think Pete's expecting a break right now. Okay. Well, we're going to take a short break, but then we're going to come back. We're going to discuss something else with RC. Um, yeah, for the radio listeners, you know, you don't have the camera, so I'm going to spoil a little secret for you. Um, Larry, Jason, and I are three white boys. Shocker. And uh, brother RC is a man of color. So I want to come back and ask him um, about being a uh, a brother brother and joining a mainstream lodge. The Red Serpent by Larry Maris. One man's obsession to avenge the death of his wife uncovers a long hidden ancient blueprint to perfect the world for future generations. Visit www.larrymaris.com. You can purchase this book anywhere except CVS. All right, welcome back to Masonic Light Podcast. Once again, it's uh, Pete, Jason, and Larry with our our guest and future correspondent, Brother R.C. And uh, so, Brother R.C., we're talking... um, a little earlier that, um, you know, our lodge, the uh, Lamberton Lodge, is what most people would call, you know, the mainstream lodge. Or, um, And you had mentioned Prince Hall Lodges earlier. Is there anything that, like, made you join our lodge instead of joining a Prince Hall Lodge? Well, first of all, I didn't know there was a difference between Prince Hall and mainstream until I came to the lounge and joined. And then um, I think we had uh, some Prince Hall guys visit. And then that's when I found out it was a difference. So until then, I, I was absent-minded about I didn't I didn't know. Were you with us when we visited the Prince Hall Lodge? There was like 50 of us that went. And no, no, they came to our. Okay. They came. They came here. And uh, Brother Hudson was schooling me in on 
the difference between. But to me, it's not really a difference uh, other than, I don't know. I don't know what they're, do they go through the same process we do or? Similar. I mean, it's similar enough that we're all recognized. Yeah, they're, they're re- just because we're Pennsylvania, we are a, um, we're a little screwed up. Pennsylvania has a different ritual than everybody else in the United States and the world. Um, the, the, the Prince Hall ritual is very similar to the ritual in every other state but ours. Yeah, and, a, a and quote, especially unquote. in South Carolina, very similar. Yeah, quote unquote modern launch. Yeah. I mean, you could go to Maryland. It's, and good, yeah, the web, it's called the Webb Preston. Um, but yeah, so it's it's the same. Um, and in Pennsylvania, we're kind of we're, we're, we recognize Prince Hall, they recognize us. We go to each other's meetings. Um, you know, the big thing I've noticed is that your your average master mason in a Prince Hall lodge knows his stuff. Right. Your average Prince Hall mason is a well learned brother that like knows. You know, probably as much about Freemasonry as your average worshipful master of a, a mainstream lodge, and that—that's our fault, I think. Right. And I, I really am, am impressed that Prince Hall guys put that much work into. Well, we it. talked about this before. I don't think it's necessarily a Prince Hall versus PA. I think it's everybody versus PA. I mean, the, we just we we leave a lot of stuff out. Or when ritual changed, they added a lot of stuff to our ritual, and here we are. So what do you think that is? They leave a lot of stuff out. Well, ours was the, the the best way I can describe it, which we're not we're not Amish by any nature, but how it's just coincidence we live in Amish country. But I feel like Pennsylvania ritual is very simple. You know, it's kind of an Amish or a Quaker, and it had, and those have nothing to do with masonry. But it's just a very simple ritual, and people wanted more in the ritual, and they added it. And Pennsylvania decided to not do that. Pennsylvania's rituals actually um, started by Irish Freemasons. So while most most lodges are more of like an English kind of style, our our lodge is more akin to what someone would see if they go to a lodge in Ireland. Right. Um, so it's just kind of unique. But yeah, and I hate to say that we leave a lot of stuff out. We leave, you know, the, the stuff was added, and we don't. We don't do it. Not that we don't recognize it, but I think it's unfair to say that we leave a lot of things out because we know our ritual is older than the more modern ritual. So what uh, what do you like the best about it, about being a, a Freemason? Hmm. Hmm, it's a lot. Well, like I told you earlier, just we're in the ring. It's just like it's not a power or like you're a superhero, but... Yeah, it's, it is, really. It's, <laughs> It's the uh, the mystique, like people, like what is it? What do you do? Who are you? You know, and uh, you just, you know, I make deliveries to different people, and since I started wearing my Masonic ring, um, and hat and things like that, they ask me millions of questions, and you know, it's just, you know, that's why I have to do my homework because I, I, I need to know. I mean, you can't tell them everything, but you know, you don't want to make up something you don't know, and then. You know, they'll be bu- bu- bugging you about it. So you just you just need to know your stuff. So um, I I have a you know we talked a little bit earlier about first meetings that you come to after your race and how mm, you know find you had an unusual experience with your very first stated meeting. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, that was. Very first stated meeting. Well, let's take it back when I before I got raised and I was doing my uh, degree work. I was what you called uh, a traveler, right? I went from lodge to lodge to lodge, and I was in everybody else's but my own. I never even saw what my own looked like. Um, so for our listeners out there in our area, and I'm sure that other districts do this, we do a district degree style degree. So we take candidates from all over the district. And it's not like a one-day class. They all get to participate, but they're all getting their degrees together in the same room. And we use three different lodges throughout the, the course of the event. And, yeah, you were you were one of them. So you saw three different lodges with – you must have been with ten other yeah. candidates at the same time. And quite the quite the event. And by the time I got back to it was mine, I was all excited. We had our, of course, chicken pot pie that night. Of course. <laughs> 
didn't even know what chicken pie pie was from California. I thought it was the crust, you know, like the the pie. Shut your mouth. I know. Don't even. Know, don't I even know. continue. I'm, I'm not gonna even go down that road with you, because. <laughs> so, uh, we get down there to go, and uh, I think that day we had a power failure or a storm or something of that nature, or windstorm or something like that. Um, no, it was a. Uh, it was like I think an auto accident, a, a substation, substation or something. I'm not an electrician, but something very important blew. And a whole section of town lost power. Yep. Uh, so we couldn't. And that did some damage to the building. They're still trying to fix. Yeah. We didn't have an elevator. We couldn't go up to the uh, lodge. So in other words, your first meeting when you walked in the building, the lights went out. Yeah. The lights were totally <laughs> out. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, okay. Here, here's the blood. <laughs> 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 right. So, you know, most, uh, you know, our, our lodge room is on the fourth floor of our building. And while we do have stairs, we don't have a lot of members that can make it up four flights of stairs. Oh, my God. I just did it on Saturday and I <laughs> just about I was giving somebody a tour and I couldn't even talk by the time I got up, up top. So um, what we did was we decided to um, have the degree on the second floor, which is where we have a... Um, an auditorium. Yeah, auditorium. Now, in Pennsylvania, because our, our notice just says the address, it was completely legal. We're allowed to move the degree to a different room as long as it's at the same address. I think it's a matter of how you tweak the minutes. Well, yeah. But, um, yeah, so we didn't have any uh, aprons. We didn't have any, any swords or staffs. We did have the charter. We made We moved some furniture around. I don't know if somebody opened up the Bible on their uh, iPad. I don't know what we did, but uh, we had kind of a, a we, ramshackle meeting. Well, you guys were literally down to the wire. I mean, you had, yeah. to, had to start at, at your start time, and there was no time to get your right. effects down there. Because we were in the same boat the week after. Okay. But we brought it, we knew, we brought it, we were able to get all our stuff down there. So. And that's when no one told me don't make eye contact, because I got catapulted into a chair that night <laughs> as a senior master ceremony. Scared, giggly like a schoolgirl. Uh, just didn't know what to do. But, uh, you know, you got your brothers uh, queuing you up and getting you through. And then, you know, they cheer you on after. And then it just became a, a regular occurrence. And then that took me down the road where I bought a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't buy a tuxedo, whatever you do. No. Nope. <laughs> that, that's, that's a big tell. When you buy the tuxedo, we know we got you. And you'll be wearing that for the next 25 years. Well, guaranteed. Brother, uh, brother Hudson said it's the last suit you ever buy. I even tried to leave it at home, and it just didn't work. <laughs> He's like, you're getting in that chair. Okay, I'm going downstairs to get the suit out the trunk. We have a new guy that asked if he could buy a tuxedo, and I said, uh, you, you can. Have fun. So, so brother RC, you, uh, you met up with a bunch of us uh, when we had a tour of uh, um, a distillery. And that's when you kind of approached us about joining the Masonic Light podcast team. Because I guess you were a listener. Yeah, all the time. So uh, tell the audience what you kind of want to do in your, uh, your, your future segment. Well, my future segment is going to be called Brother on the Street. And it's going to be with me and Larry Hudson. And we're going to take the Masonic Light podcast to the street. And um, we're going to be talking to people, interviewing, doing segments. Maybe a couple of skits and things like that, and uh, where we can actually get feedback live from the, the people that listen. Because you know, do we have phones in here yet, or in we, have, or? Yeah. Well, we, we phones can. are a thing, yeah. Oh. But but we don't record live, so it's okay. it's we we would need to schedule a phone call. Okay, but the basic thing is to get. We're going to be a street team, you know. Uh, we said we're going to be like the Blues Brothers. <laughs> we're just going to roll around <laughs> the different lodges, and. Uh, Tell them we're on the mission. You're going to wear the fedoras and everything? Yeah, we're on a mission. We'll we'll need pictures of that, by the way. We're on a mission. Larry, you're like 20 feet from the microphone, just letting you know. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Between you and RC, we're like the dream team here trying to stay in front of the microphone. (laughs) Uh, Jason and I are directly across from each other, rolling our eyes, because we're the only ones next to a microphone. (laughs) So I do, I I got a question. I got a couple questions. Uh, You know, we said that we were going to talk about uh, you know, being a black man in in a, a mainstream lodge, and like when you, I've I visited a Philadelphia lodge, uh, an inner city lodge, and and they seem to be 
very diverse for a standard blue lodge. You know, we know the Prince Hall is traditionally black men. When you go to a city lodge, uh, there's a lot of diversity, not just white, black, but all sorts of sorts of ethnicity. And religion. Like in New York, I've seen pretty much every religion. Right. So we sit and we say that we're a diverse organization, but when you do come out to one of these country lodges, it, you know, our lodges are predominantly white. Of course, we have some uh, diversity in there, but not like you would see in the inner city. So I guess it's a twofold question. Uh, have you felt anything, any way, I mean, good or bad, uh, of acceptance or not acceptance, you know, being a black man at a predominantly, uh, you know, less diverse lodge out here in the country. Um, and the other side of that is, you know, what do you think that we can do or should we be doing anything out here in these, you know, more white, if you will, lodges to promote diversity? Well, as far as, uh, no, I don't feel any difference. Uh, I just feel we all brothers communicating, getting together. Like I told you earlier, uh, I learned a lot of history from all the older, the older elders, I call them. I guess I'm taking that from the church perspective when I say elders. I don't have any problems with that. But far as uh, going out, people don't know what masonry is. Um, like, it, I hate to keep saying, they just think it's blood and guts and sacrificing. I don't know where that came from, but um, the organization and the structure here I love, I mean, because it's like, I'm I'm the oldest brother in my family, and I live 2,000 miles away from my little brothers. Well, when they're not little, they're in their 30s. I'm in my 40s. But being here with the Masons, it's like I have an older brother. I have a grandfather, you know, away from my home. So. Larry's like your crazy drunk uncle that's a little <laughs> bit inappropriate sometimes and sometimes shows you dirty pictures on his phone. <laughs> Yeah, so we all have that crazy uncle, and that's Larry. Yeah. But as far as acceptance, I, I feel very accepted here. I don't have any shyness or intimidation or my head down or anything like that. I get right in, and I, I love, I'm here, right here today with you guys, you know, having a good time. And Do you think the lodges do a good job, or they could do anything better to, to promote diversity? You got to get people past their fear of masonry. And the uh, the unknowing, you know, um, it's it's a fraternity. And then some people who think they know about it, they go into like the college fraternities, like oh, what's that, the betas and the capicola. Yeah, they think the it's capicolas. Yeah, the capicolas. I love, yeah, I love that's my Italian. I love, yeah, yeah, I love capicola. I'm sorry. <laughs> Always got food on my mind. But um, they they get into that stigma. They think it's that you know you got to do a pledge and you got to go through this and got to go through that and. You know, they don't really understand is 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 learning like the slogan says is making a man a better man. That's what it's all about. Well, I mean, I got to say, when I joined back in uh, 97, I think it was, um, I was. You know, being a, uh, a an Italian guy, a Catholic Italian, I looked around the lodge and I just saw a bunch of white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And I'm like, you know, I felt like I was the most ethnically diverse guy getting into the lodge and i'm like i was all paranoid are they gonna are they gonna blackball me are they not gonna like let me in plus you were a catholic too right and um you know and so no and they really welcomed me with open arms and then like uh, a couple years later a friend of mine um uh miguel who is a uh he's a sergeant i don't know what kind of sergeant i'm sorry miguel but he's a he's a full-time um serviceman in the army and uh he is a Puerto Rican and he's very, very dark skinned. And he asked me about joining the lodge. And I'm like, absolutely. I got him a petition. And I, I you know, I don't know why, but I sat there and I was like sweating bullets. I was sweating yep. bullets during the vote because nobody in my lodge has ever done anything that I would have thought racist or anything like that they would have not voted him in. But I'm looking around. And I'm like, you know, somebody here has got to be like that guy that's just going to throw throw that one black ball because it's anonymous. And you know what? Nobody did. Right. Everybody just was completely awesome. I, it, it's tough, though. You know, I think that when you go out on a committee of inquiry or you talk to somebody, you know, and, and you know, we don't have an all white lodge, but we, I was just on a committee of inquiry. Uh, another black man who joined a lodge. Great guy. And uh you know, like, oh, masonry, it's diverse. All Everybody's welcome. And then he comes to his first meeting and, you know, 
he's the one guy in the room. Like, <laughs> oh, Jason, you're, you're he's a jerk. He's the token. <laughs> he's the token. <laughs> oh. I was but, like, and when I say diverse, I mean, once you come to the meeting, we're going to be diverse. <laughs> right. Oh. oh, he's waving his arms. Larry's waving his arms. He so, broke his shoulder. Um, so we're going to take a quick break again, and we're going to come back, and we've got a couple cool segments we're going to share with you. Uh, we'll be right back. Hey, Masonic Light listeners. Thanks for tuning into the show and listening. But we want to hear from you. Do you have a great Masonic story to tell? Or would you like to be a guest? Or would you like to just call in and let us know where you're listening from or what lodge you belong to? We'd be happy to play it on an upcoming episode. In the meantime, find us at www.masoniclight.com or on Facebook at Masonic Podcasts and Twitter at Masonic Light. Please give us a call at 315-596-2766 or... 31559 Mason. And we're back. Thank you, Masonic Light listeners. Listen to episode number 19. So something we've been threatening for a while is a possible segment with Seth Anthony. And I had the pleasure of uh, capturing some of uh, Seth's upcoming segments. But he is going to do uh, a reoccurring segment with us called Corpora Obscurum. And uh, I don't know Latin, but Google Translate says that that means obscure societies. And and maybe tell the listeners what Seth's passion is. So Seth is passionate about fezes. So he's obviously passionate about masonry, but also the history of fezes and some of these obscure societies that are unmasonic. Well, not unmasonic, but just non-masonic bodies uh, that also wear fezes. So we have a slew of oddball uh, societies up here that Seth is going to do a segment on. He's also the director of the Museum of Fezology. He is, which is which located... Which just happens to be located in the basement of his home. I believe it is. And that could be at the fezmuseum.org, I believe. Uh, I don't know. We should just listen um, to a segment. I don't know. Well, let's play the segment, and at the very end of the segment, Seth himself gives the address. Without further ado. You're about to enter Corpora Obscura, the realm of weird fraternal organization. Leave your Freemasonry behind. Prepare to meet druids, caliphs, and wild creatures. Knock thrice and enter at your own risk. Attention, Masonic Light Podcast listeners on deck. On today's Obscura Corporum, we're going all arsenal of democracy and talking about trench rats and alley cats. The National Order of Trench Rats started as an organization for disabled World War I veterans who were patients in the United States Public Health Service Hospital No. 54. The name Trench Rats was adopted as it was symbolic of the rats which the World War I veterans encountered in the trenches in France. Currently, the order is a secret, fraternal, and honor organization limiting its members by selection only to those who show their devotion and meritorious service to disabled American veterans and the welfare of disabled veterans everywhere, their widows and orphans. The group has several different styles of fezes, with different colors denoting rank. All of the fezes have a prominently displayed rat on the front. The local group is called a dugout and have purple fezes. The group is led on a national level by the Imperial Golden Rodent. The National Order of Alley Cats is a unique organization. It is a ladies' auxiliary to the National Order of Trench Rats. Local bodies are referred to as rat traps, making reference to the idea that women have trapped the men in the local dugout of trench rats. The group was founded in 1943 and still exists today, although it's very small. The presiding officer is titled the Golden Cat, with members being referred to as Sister Cats. You can check out the fezes of these organizations in the Veterans Group area of the Museum of Fezology, located at fezmuseum.org. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're back here once again with uh, Brother R.C., and we almost missed a very, very important discussion that we need to have with you. Um, Cell phone gate, 2016. Yeah, you were involved in a big scandal at uh, at a one-day class recently involving your cell phone as a, a recording device. Could you please enlighten our listeners to um, what happened to you and what happened at this one-day class? First of all, why me? That's how I felt. <laughs> why me, Lord? Why me? 
<laughs> but it went the day. That was a long day, actually. We went up to uh, Harrisburg or Hershey? Harrisburg, right? Harrisburg. Yeah. And uh, we all got on the bus. Dressed in tux. First time wearing my new tux. I mean, the day before, I think that's Friday, I felt like a like I was going to the prom. <laughs> yeah. I just felt like I was going to the prom, getting fitted for my suit. And, you know what they say. You know what that? Everybody gets lucky on prom night. <laughs> <laughs> so we get up there, and uh, it was well organized, actually. And, uh, you know, we all got on the bus and went up there, and um, I got to be the senior master ceremony up there. You look good, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I um, got to meet a lot of interesting uh characters they had up there from Abe Lincoln to those were the guys with the uh what was that el- elephant Scottish, Scottish, Scottish right. rights yeah they had a lot of really neat costumes and uh brother Larry Hudson does our Facebook page and this particular day he left his phone at home so we're driving down he goes oh damn it to hell I left my phone on the counter I was charging it. I wanted it to be fully charged so uh, I could take pictures for the Facebook. So, uh, okay, no problem. I'll take pictures. Yeah, do that. So I'm just snapping pictures and, you know, the different the district de- deputy, what's his name? Um, district deputy, Larry Dirk. Yeah, Dirk, take pictures of him, Abe Lincoln, costumes, everything. And we get the whole day we eat. Take pictures of the hall. And when, by the way, we had chicken pie pie there too. Cha ching. <laughs> I just thought it was just going to be some something else, but it was good though. It was good. They gave uh, Sandy a run for her money. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, they gave her a run oh, for her money. Sh- <laughs> I didn't say they beat her. They just gave her a run for her money. No. <laughs> Side note I'm going to interrupt your story. <laughs> I helped them move the ancient dough roller that they use for chicken pot pie. It is. It, 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 it was, I mean, my 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 kidney dropped out on on the floor when I was done lifting this thing. I it is so heavy. heavy. And it. Scott and Sandy do this by themselves. They get this thing off the shelves and they set it. I told Sandy that I was never gonna eat chicken pot pie, but that's a lie, Scott. Sorry, I lied. All right, so RC, back, back, back to the story. Back, back to your story of photos, photos, dinner. We're leaving the the calf all in line to go get our uh, Scottish rights. Uh, and they set us all down, and uh, there had to be about what four hundred of us in there. Oh yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, I was and, in the uh, very back row. I saw it all. I was in the middle, and I was the only African American there, the only brother. So they get the first segment, and uh, a guy comes down the aisle and go, "You come here," and you know. Everybody's looking around, and I'm like, me? He's like, yeah, you, come here. So, okay. Now, at this point, I'm kind of giddy because everything went right so far. So I'm thinking maybe, hey, maybe they're going to pull me out of the audience and use me as, you know, a prop or... The exemplar. The exemplified degree, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I made eye contact. That's what happened. That's, that's just, I, I just made eye contact. So we walk up the uh, aisle... And then it just seemed like we walked down this long corridor, long corridor. And I'm talking to the guys like, hey, how's it going? And, you know, so what are you guys going to have me do? Now, now, meanwhile, you were already out of the room. But then another guy grabbed the district deputy and, yeah. and pulled him yeah. out as well. So they opened the door. I see the district deputy sitting there. And they're like, sit down. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> so I'm like. Do you know why you're here? I'm like, no. And they're like, uh, there's reports that you're taking video of the rituals and everything's going on today. I'm like, well, no video, but, you know, um, I've taken pictures for our, our Facebook page. And the district deputy goes, well, yeah, I, I know Larry Larry uh, Hudson's work. He does great work. But we just want to make sure you didn't do any video taping. So I said, uh, well, my phone's dead. And lo and behold, they pull out a charger out of his pocket and plug my phone up and confiscate it, turn it on, and he goes through the whole phone. Okay, you can keep this picture. You keep that picture. Keep this picture. Uh, Okay, there's no videos. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hmm. So then I walked out the door like, why me? (laughs) 
Why me, Lord? Out of all the people, why me? But I mean, I still had a good time the whole, the whole time. It, it was actually funny to me. So they actually confiscated it. Yeah, they like can't. they wouldn't give it back if you didn't. But, uh, well, I guess they was, would have made him delete it. And that was yeah. your first Scottish Rite meeting. Yeah, that was my first Scottish Rite. So you have this history of first meetings, really, yeah. really. Yeah, that's two in a row. I'm, I'm on a roll. Remind <laughs> me never to go anywhere with him. You've never heard of the, 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 the eighth and a half degree? It's <laughs> thou shalt not videotape. So, yeah. So just for future reference, um, nothing, nothing, none of the degrees, nothing of the ritual gets recorded. No, no. Um, and no pictures of any signs, Symbols, handshakes, like any of that good stuff. Anything. You know, if, if we're putting a pin on some veteran's lapel... That's, that's fine. Terrible. Yeah, that's fine. It was brought to me if it's a close, we could take pictures, right? No, if it's closed, we can't. If it's yeah. open, we can't. Yeah, open, you can't. Yeah, you can't. So There's yeah. a lot of stuff you can take a picture of when it's closed, though. Just not. Yeah, like the chaplain sleeping things. Like right. That. Yeah. I don't want to have anything to do with pictures. <laughs> like I told, <laughs> and I throw my phone in the trash can until we, <laughs> until we finish. Yeah. Let let Larry take him from now on. <laughs> Larry's the camera guy. <laughs> uh, well, RC, thank we. Thank you for being a good sport. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, your, your segments. Um, I think when we get out of here, Jay- Jason's got a special treat, a little teaser for us. Yeah, a little um, trailer. And uh, so what else we got going on here today? We got to talk about what's coming up. We got news. We have, what else is going on? Yeah, we on? got the news. Jack, you know, Jack's not with we, we don't have enough room in the studio. Uh, so we had to kick Jack out for, for a week. And uh, we do have him uh, phoning in the news. And then uh, I think that's pretty much all we got. And then we'll uh, just go around the horn with uh, what we got coming up. So should we listen to the news? Let's go to the news. And the news. Good news, everyone! Masonic Light News. News not fit to print. The Grand Lodge of Arkansas has issued an edict stating that it will no longer recognize any Master Mason having red hair. The edict stated that it is well known that people with red hair are prone to outbursts in response to being recognized. So we just decided not to recognize them anymore. Upon having the word recognized explained to them, the Grand Lodge immediately rescinded the edict. In a related story, according to the Past Bastard website, the Grand Lodge of Illinois has secretly been increasing membership by quietly absorbing those annoying, irregular lodges that keep popping up all over the state. Considering they, quote, get pretty much the same work we do, says one Grand Lodge representative, why not save the energy of doing all that extra degree work? A collective facepalm was heard across the state. In other news, Brother John Nagy of the Building Better Builders Facebook group has released a report linking the decline of Masonic membership to the global climate change. Noted gastroenterologist Brother Colin Blow offered further insights into contributing factors. We've actually caused it ourselves, Blow reported. The sheer volume of greenhouse gases generated by our now famous chili cook-offs and baked bean enhanced fundraiser meals far exceeds anything the government is able to measure. Several disgruntled members were heard to exclaim, this stinks, but none was willing to contribute any actual solutions to the problem. This is the Masonic News, so mote it was. And we're back. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, RC. Um, I was expecting some, uh, like, big Isaac Hayes, deep-throated radio voice guy. You got to give it time, baby. Give it time. This is the first time around. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so anybody got anything exciting coming up? It's almost Christmas time. Um, we've got, oh, you know, we've got, um, I'm almost done. Grottoing. Oh yeah, you are. My grotto retirement's very soon. That's right. That's right. Um, so our, our November meeting for grotto is going to be December fifth, that, because that's just how we roll, and um, it'll be installation of officers. And I am going to be installing our next monarch, and I am done. Done. 
I think that's the fourth. It's the fourth. The fourth. Oh, Actually, okay. it's the fifth. Go on the fifth. Right. Anybody who is not going to vote for me, <laughs> it's on the fifth. <laughs> so uh, Jason's running for uh, Venerable Prophet. Um, so that would be our number four chair. So if he maybe he'll win. Maybe he won't. We don't know. Make Grotto eat great again. Um, or taste great again. Something like that. So, yeah. So basically, other than that, um, I, once I do that, I'm looking to f- channel my time in the Tall Cedars. That's my uh, my, my future. Yeah. Your Tall Cedars uh, degree work was great, by the way. Thank you. I, uh, I uh, was Prince Master of the Palace. I wore a silly outfit. Yeah, that was hilarious. I captured the best <laughs> picture of you peeping through the door. Yeah, yes. that was hilarious. <laughs> and uh, so next year, I'm going to be the Junior Deputy Grand Tall Cedar, which means the number three idiot. That's me. <laughs> Eye contact. Uh, Larry, you have anything else coming up? Uh, other than the fact that we're trying to coordinate a show with the brothers down in Australia, and we'll be working on that hopefully before I go get my arm sawed off uh, the 13th of December, Jack. So we got to do it beforehand. Uh, so we'll be coordinating that. You and Jason. We're doing our Christmas, the Christmas that, that early? Yeah, the Christmas special. Well, if I don't do it that early, which is fine, I can do it from a hospital bed. Man, we're falling apart. Can we just start? Can you put uh, in post production that beep? Yeah. Beep. <laughs> beep. <laughs> beep. <laughs> Brother Larry? Yeah. Brother Larry? <laughs> Brother Larry? <laughs> oh, man. So who is, who's going to give Larry CPR if, we, <laughs> if he needs it? So, RC, I know you've got some stuff coming up. Uh, December 7th, we've got uh, an extra meeting. we got yeah. a third degree. Yeah. Our, our buddy Ben is going to be getting his third degree. Oh, Ben's our yeah, sponsor yeah, yeah. for purewaterpa.com. And a constant member of Goose and Gridiron. We love you, Ben. Um, January 7th, Saturday morning, 9 in the morning, district deputy workshop. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Go back, go back. First of all, you have an extra, uh, extra meeting on the 7th? That's a Wednesday. Well, I don't know why we're doing it December 7th. That's what it says in the notice. I really? Don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Um, December se- or January 7th is the uh, district deputies workshop for new mm. officers. Oh, new. Okay. Saturday morning. Um, and that's my birthday, actually. And December 7th is also the quarterly meeting of Grand Lodge ah. in the uh, city of Philadelphia. We should go. Uh, if I'm no. not doing anything, I'll go. Another road trip? Yeah. We can go have lunch at the... Uh, Reading Terminal Market. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, What do I have going on? December 3rd, Lodge 43 is doing three one-day conferrals on some candidates that could not make the October 29th class. And then we have our... Normally, we don't do degree work in December, but we're we're playing catch-up. And then uh, we have our stated meeting, and that's pretty much all I have brewing. We have a officer meeting with our worship master-elect... Uh, tonight, after we're done here, and uh, that's about it, as far as Blue Lodge. Well, that's it, Larry. Do you have uh, do you have anything to close us out with your uh, your 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 idiotic ramblings? Yeah, I have a few things here. <clears throat> Always have a few things, but it's going to be a, sh- a shortened version tonight. So bear thank, with thank me. goodness. Bear with me. That's what she said. Uh, want to give thanks to Monarch Studios for allowing us to record. Uh, our, our special guest, R.C. McCorby, thanks for being here and helping us out through this ordeal. And to Jason, our producer, who always does magnificent work. And I'm going to close it out tonight a little bit differently. I'm going to bring a point. Several months ago, there was a, an attempted break-in uh, in, a, in a lodge. I think it was in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. And the Tyler was able to stop it and... Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about carrying firearms inside lodges as opposed to the normal Tyler sword. And I know it's been, it was discussed in our lodge, it was discussed with some police officers in our lodge who attend as to what you do and so forth. And us being on the fourth floor and their main entrance being on the first floor. You said this is going to be short. It's going to be short, yeah. But I want to give a special shout out to the Tyler of... Risky Not Falls, Vermont. The Honorable Brother Douglas Sharp, who stood his ground while men, not masons, tried to enter the launch. He brandished his sword and his trusty 357 Magnum, scaring off the would-be intruders. 
I always knew that sword would work. That was supposed to be dry, witty humor. I get it. I'm gonna <laughs> Vermont <let> it <laughs> humor. Remember that. That's all I have. What? What? What did we just hear? <laughs> what do you mean? What did you just hear? This was the news with Jack Harley. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Other than that, I'm... God damn it, Larry. <laughs> you killed it last time with these. I killed it last time. <laughs> Larry, good luck. We understand you're going to be having a surgery coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. December 13th? Uh, December 13th. So we're going to yeah, try and yeah. record a show before Larry's surgery. Yeah, our schedule might be a little off in the next upcoming weeks, but... Did, I don't want to forget. I want to give a special shout out. And thanks to our Grand Lodge coordinator, Jack Snafu Lots. Thanks, Jack, for listening to our show and correcting us as we air. This is Jason Lewis. This is Pete Ruggieri. It's Larry Maris. R.C. McCorvey. Good Have night. a great evening. Thanks for listening. Please edit this show. Mm-hmm.